Good morning friends, I am Dr. Vibha Sharma, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Public Administration, MCM Devi College, Chandigarh. Today, I will be speaking on the paper Indian Administration and specifically on module number 5 that is local administration and dwelling upon the rural local bodies. The learning objectives of this module are to trace the evolution of the Panchayati Raj administration, to explain the concept of local government, to appreciate the significance of the village level parliament which is also known as the Gram Sabha, to list the basic features of the 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act. Besides this, the module will also elaborate upon the three tires of the Panchayati Raj administration. A system of local government is found in every part of the world and in India also we have a tradition of having a local government since times immemorial. India, we have the local government in the form of district administration, municipal administration and rural and urban local government. A system of local government is prevalent in all the parts of the world and in India also we have the system since times immemorial. We have the system in the form of district administration, municipal administration as well as the rural local bodies. Today I will be speaking about the rural local bodies. Local government. First let us discuss what local government is. The local government is the government of a locality by the people of a locality and this government basically looks after the functioning of a particular set area. As per John Clark, the local government appears to be that part of the government of a nation or a state which deals mainly with such matters as certain inhabitants of a particular place or a district. Elements of the local government. The elements of the local government include local area. That means that government is only for the specific number of people living in a specific area. Local inhabitants. Local inhabitants mean that only those people who are living within the limits of that local area are able to get the services of the local government. Local authority. Local authority means that that government which the people have elected have authority over them in levying of taxes, in other such administrative matters. Local finances. This local government, whether it is at a rural level or an urban level, has the authority to raise the finances locally by way of levying taxes, fees, fines or any other miscellaneous sources. The next feature of local government is local autonomy. The local government is to have local autonomy in all the matters. Now the significance of local government. The local government is a government of a locality thereby it has a lot of significance and especially so in a democratic country. The local government contributes to the strengthening of the democracy from the grassroots level. We see that the people when they elect their own representatives at the local level they tend to re elect the finer ones at the higher levels too. Local government is also a nursery for the budding politicians. It gives an idea and experience to the local politician so that in future the same person can go to the higher levels of politics and be a better politician. Local government also helps in checking the ill effects, the drawbacks of bureaucracy because bureaucracy tends to be basically something which delays the functioning of any government. But here, since the government is at the doorstep, it is easier for the people to basically deal with the government. It is the government at the doorstep. Then, because the government is giving services at the local level, we find that it reduces the burden of the senior levels of the government and they can dwell upon basically the important matters rather than dealing with small field level issues. It helps in mobilization of resources, whether it's men, money or material. We have endless examples where we find that the local level people under the leadership of their local leaders are able to mobilize enough amount of resources to carry out their work. Evolution. 
let us talk about evolution of local government in india there's an old tradition in india of local self government in fact indus valley civilization and during the bc era also we had references to the local government in india and we had the references even in the vedas and the upanishads during the british period various efforts were done to provide for local bodies there was de financial decentralization there are number of uh, examples in that prominent amongst these are lord mayo's resolution on financial decentralization in 1870 besides that in 1882 lord proposed the local gov local self government in india and he is known as the father of local self government in india he gave a resolution which is known as the magna carta of the local government in india the government of india acts 1919 and 1935 also give a reference to the local government in india after independence we adopted the planning process of development in the country and the community development programs were launched in 1952 and national extension scheme was launched in 1953 later on these became the nodal bodies and we refer to them as the community development blocks for the rural local bodies the first committee which was formed to go into the structure of the local bodies was the balwant rai mehta committee in 1957 a few features of balwant rai mehta committee are it proposed a three tiered structure for the rural local bodies the lowest tier the gram panchayat a group of panchayats become the block you have the panchayat samiti a few panchayat samitis are combined and we have the zila parishad at the district level under this balwant rai mehta committee development programs at each level were proposed to be entrusted to the local bodies adequate power responsibility and resources were to be placed at the disposal of the local bodies the system ultimately evolved and we have the present form of local bodies in our country there are quite a number of committees and commissions which were formed to go into the local bodies and their structure prominent amongst these commissions and committees are the ashok mehta committee in 1978 the gvk rao committee in 1984 lm singhvi committee in 8687 pk thungan committee in 1988 and the sarkaria commission in 1988 another milestone in the evolution of the local bodies is the 73rd constitutional amendment act this was the act which gave constitutional recognition to the rural local bodies in india let us now discuss the features of the 73rd constitutional amendment act as per the 73rd constitutional amendment act 11th schedule has been added to the constitution of india which provides for the number of functions to be performed by the rural local bodies other features other prominent features are the three tiered structure with gram panchayat at the base panchayat samiti and zila parishad the other ties of the rural local bodies gram sabha has been given a constitutional status under the 73rd constitutional amendment act besides these there's a provision of direct election which was not there earlier in such a good measure at all the three levels of the panchayati raj institutions state legislature provides representative option of chairpersons at all the three levels of the panchayats there is reservation for the scheduled caste scheduled tribes and the women in the case of rural local bodies for the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribes the provision is to have the same number of seats in proportion of their population to the total population of the area and in the case of women it is one third of the seats are to be reserved for women and this includes one third of the seats reserved for sc women similar reservations are made 
not only in the case of the other bodies but also in the position of the chairman of the gram panchayat the panchayat samiti and the zilla parishad all members whether they are directly elected or indirectly elected there are some indirectly elected members like the members of the legislative assemblies they have a right to vote in the meetings of the gram panchayat samiti as well as the zila parishad it is mandatory now after the 73rd amendment that all the states hold elections to the panchayati raj bodies after every 5 years earlier this was not so so many states did not conduct elections periodically rather there were long periods of time when elections were not conducted besides this there is a provision of giving grants to the local bodies so that they are able to carry out their work in a fine manner under the 73rd amendment there is a provision of setting up finance commission this finance commission divides the proceeds of the taxes between the states and the rural as well as the urban local bodies the panchayats under the 73rd amendment are empowered to make developmental plans economic development social justice social welfare for the planning process at the state level now let us discuss the gram sabha gram sabha is also known as the village level parliament the features of the gram sabha include one it is constituted for a single village or a groups of group of villages it is the village level assembly which constitutes all the registered voters of that particular area if the area is one village then the registered voters of that particular village and if the area is more than one village then the registered voters of all the villages which are included in the sabha area the gram sabha meets two to four times in a year as per the act of the panchayati raj in that particular state the meetings of the gram sabha are fixed by the sarpanch of the gram panchayat and he is responsible for a minimum number of meetings every year now let us discuss the functions of the gram sabha the primary the most important function of the gram sabha is to elect its executive body that is the gram panchayat the gram sabha is supposed to it considers and approves the budget of the developmental plans the social welfare and other things done by the gram panchayat it also renders assistance in the implementation of the development schemes pertaining to the village besides this the gram sabha identifies the beneficiaries for the developmental plans the welfare activities concerning that particular village it not only helps in the development implementation of the development plans but it also helps in mobilizing voluntary labor and contributions and cash and kind to complete the work the functioning of the gram panchayat besides this the gram sabha may perform any other function which is entrusted to it under the panchayati raj act of that particular state now let us discuss the role and significance of the gram sabha now gram sabha as i told earlier is also considered as the village level parliament it is the foundation stone of the democracy at the grass root level it provides 
a platform where direct democracy can be practiced where people actually take part in governing themselves the work of the gram sabha inculcates a feeling of interest in the political civic and developmental affairs of the locality by the people of that particular locality due to the significance of the gram sabha it has been accorded constitutional status through the 73rd constitutional amendment act now let us go on to discuss gram panchayat gram panchayat is the lowest tier of the panchayati raj institution its size varies depending on the size of the sabha area as well as the population of the area the member of the panchayat are known as panches and they are elected ward wise if the village is bigger and the head of the panches is known as sarpanch the presiding officer that is the sarpanch is either elected directly or indirectly as the case may be as per the state level panchayati raj acts the term of the panchayat is 5 years though it can be dissolved earlier but the government has to conduct elections within 6 months of its dissolution functions of the gram panchayat the gram panchayat has a number of functions these functions relate to development civic amenities social welfare and so on let us discuss the civic functions first the civic functions include the making of the public streets waterways construction of new bridges culverts and all such issues which go on to improve the civic amenities of a particular village developmental functions include development of agriculture irrigation cooperation animal husbandry industry education and so on all these things basically develop the people of a particular area so development functions are very important functions of the gram panchayats economic functions giving land on rent maintaining and running cattle breeding centers organizing public markets fairs exhibitions are also some functions some more functions of the gram panchayat besides these functions the gram panchayats perform a number of legislative functions as well the legislative functions include passing of resolutions and making bylaws as under the act as per the provisions of the act besides the legislative functions the gram panchayats also perform judicial and quasi judicial functions like acting as a small village court having civil revenue and petty criminal jurisdiction there are a number of administrative functions of the gram panchayat they include prohibiting the use of the water of a well pond which is suspected to be dangerous for public health regulating dyeing and dyeing industry so that the water bodies are not polluted within all these activities are under the sabha area now let us look at a small video clip of the functions which the gram panchayat performs this video clip gives an idea that gram panchayat not only performs the regular functions of administration or quasi judicial functions but also looks into the day to day matters of the people living in a particular area for example the video is showing something about the water scarcity in a particular area
प्रधान जी हमारे हैंडपंप में पानी नहीं आ रहा पानी के लिए हमें मीलों भटकना पड़ रहा है बहन ठीक कह रही है प्रधान जी हमारे बोरिंग में भी पानी नहीं आ रहा फसल सूख रही है आज हमारे गांव में जल का संकट है इससे हम भी वाकिफ हैं। इसका समाधान हम सभी को मिलजुल कर करना होगा क्या आप लोग इसके लिए तैयार है तो सुनिए हमारे हैंडपंपो में पानी इसलिए नहीं आ रहा क्यूँकी जमीन का जल स्तर बहुत नीचे चला गया है इसके जल स्तर को ऊपर लाने के लिए हमें इसे रिचार्ज करना होगा बरसात से पहले छोटे छोटे बांध यानी चेक डैम और तालाबों द्वारा जल का फिर से भरण करना होगा इससे धरती का जल स्तर भी बना रहेगा और साथ ही इस बात का भी ध्यान रखें कि तालाबों में कपड़े ना धोएं और जानवरों को ना नहलाएं। इससे जल प्रदूषित होता है जल प्रदूषण नहीं जल संरक्षण करें In order to carry out the functions of the gram panchayat the gram panchayats have been given authority to levy taxes they can also take fees in certain areas fines they also have a provision of getting grants from the higher levels of the body it may be the panchayat samiti or even the state government besides the grants they also get contributions some contributions may be even from the local people who may contribute in cash or kind for performing the developmental and other functions of the gram panchayat besides this the gram panchayat can get some income from the land and the property which it owns for example it can give the land on rent it can construct buildings and that can be used for renting and earning of revenue besides this there are certain other miscellaneous sources of the gram panchayat through which they earn money and they can carry out their functions now we see just to give you an idea the role of a woman sarpanch how she goes exhorts people tells them the benefits of Uh, the gram panchayat and tries to give them a sense of belongingness so that they come out and take part in the functioning of the gram panchayat of a village yeta aur prashasan ke sehyog se bani gram sadkon se guzar kar gram sarangi pahunchna ek sukhad ehsaas hai sarangi gram panchayat aaj nirvachit mahila jan pratinidhi ke kushal netrut ki misal ban gayi hai सरपंच श्रीमती फुंदी बाई महिला सुलभ सौम्यता और आत्मविश्वास के संतुलन से इस ग्राम पंचायत का कुशल संचालन कर रही हैं। सूरज चढ़ते ही सारंगी गांव में जीवन की गतिविधियां शुरू हो जाती हैं। सरपंच फुंदी बाई गाँव में सभी से मिलते जुलते हालचाल पूछते महिलाओं का हौसला बढ़ाते हुए पंचायत कार्यालय पहुँचती है उनके कार्यालय में दिन भर महिलाओं की भीड़ है क्योंकि फुंदी बाई से अपनी बात कहते हुए उन्हें किसी तरह की झिझक नहीं होती गांव के विद्यालय में बालिकाओं को शिक्षा के प्रति जागरूक करना मध्यान्ह भोजन की गुणवत्ता जांचना जल व्यवस्था को निरंतर परखना उनकी प्राथमिकताओं में शामिल है ग्रामवासियों की समस्याओं के तुरंत निराकरण के लिए वे प्रशासन के उच्च अधिकारियों से भी सीधे संवाद करती है सारंगी झाबुआ जिले की सबसे बड़ी पंचायत है और श्रीमती हुंदी बाई यहाँ पिछले दस सालों से सरपंच है नाउ लेट अस डिस्कस द इंटरमीडिएट टायर ऑफ द पंचायती राज इंस्टीट्यूशन यस आई एम टॉकिंग ऑफ द पंचायत समिति द टायर एट द ब्लॉक लेवल पंचायत समिति बेसिकली इज मेड फॉर around 70 to 100 villages in a particular state yes the number of villages may vary from state to state the number of members in the panchayat samiti vary from 10 to 40 depending on the population of a particular area composition now let us discuss the composition of the panchayat samiti it has directly elected members representatives of the sarpanches of the gram panchayats in that area 
MPs and MLAs who represent the people who are there in the Panchayat Samiti area. Functions of the Panchayat Samiti Unlike the functions of the Gram Panchayat, the Panchayat Samiti in various states have been allotted different kinds of functions. In some states, they are the most important tire. In other states, they are just the coordinatory or the supervisory bodies. A Panchayat Samiti performs a number of functions like the administrative functions, the financial functions and the legislative functions. The Panchayat Samiti performs a number of functions and for performing these functions you have the official members at the block level. These official members are headed by the block development officer and along with the block development officer there are a number of extension officers. For example, we have education extension officer, social welfare extension officer, cooperatives extension officer, industry extension officer. This the number of extension officers depend upon the needs of a particular area. Besides the block development officer and the extension of 